the former New York. We'll start off with some videos of Rudy and then we'll go through the article like we normally do and we'll just follow this and it, I'm pretty sure this will take us on a, a journey that we were not prepared for. Uh, what well, we got like 10 people in here and just make sure you hit that like button for me. I know it's the intimate set and this is all the Moet. So, all right, we got Rudy Giuliani. And if you've been living up under a rock, Rudy has been lying his ass off for years and it's finally caught up with him. Well, during the 2020 election, there were two women that were working down in Georgia, counting votes, tallying them up to make sure that you and I were ensured the democracy that the Constitution provided to us. Well, there was a, a lie that went on that the 2020 election was stolen, and this lie was carried out by the president at the current time, a one Donald J. Trump, and his lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. Now, one of these guys had protection for being the president. The other one was just a random ass lawyer that continued to lie, lie, lie. Well, he ended up getting hit with a defamation suit, which turned out to be $150 million that he owed these two election workers. Now, this first video we're gonna watch is about the creditors freezing all of his assets. Now, typically, you can file for bankruptcy and all of your assets and everything are protected. Boom, it's just that business I had. Hey, there's no money in it. It's over with. The only thing is, this is a defamation case. Meaning, whatever you own is going to go to them. So the judge said, you can go ahead and file your bankruptcy, but your assets and shit, we're still going to watch over them until you can pay this $150 million. So this video here is going to talk about them freezing the assets and him trying to file the bankruptcy. Then we'll go into the judgment that just got dropped this week that he actually has to give up the apartment within seven days, all of his assets and cars, which isn't going to total $150 million, but it is a start. And let me tell you something. $1 million is better than no million dollars. The former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani literally yelling after being threatened with jail while facing the prospect of of losing everything he owns, of course. Uh, the court uh, court verdicts against him you know, dwarf what he owns. A lawyer for his creditors saying she could consider seeking prison time for his alleged, quote, bankruptcy crimes. So I want to go straight to Caitlin Polans. She was in that courtroom today, and she's live tonight again for us outside Giuliani's New York City apartment, which, Caitlin, as you've reported, could be worth $6 million. So I obviously very relevant in this whole conversation. But you were inside that courtroom today with the chaos, and you're watching the Zoom, Giuliani yelling, and I mean, tell us what happened. Well, Aaron, the judge laid out the end game. On Friday, this judge is going to make a decision. And there are two options here for Rudy Giuliani and what happens to his wealth. One option, a trustee could be taking total control over everything that Giuliani has, everything that's incoming, all of the things that he has, what he's able to buy and pay for, or he could be thrown out of bankruptcy court and essentially thrown to the mercy of his creditors, specifically Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, those two Georgia election workers to whom he- $6 million New York apartment and Palm Beach condo. Let me get the, hey, which one, which one of y'all want? Because it's two of them. Y'all want the, the 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 NY condo or the Palm Beach condo? Y'all want the New York apartment or the Palm Beach condo? Because there's two of them that are getting this, this $150 million. So I, I might be like, let me get the Palm Beach. But then the New York, I know the New York is going to be worth a little bit more a little bit later on. $148 million. They are quite unhappy right now. And that was what we saw a lot of in the courtroom today. Their attorney speaking to the judge about how Giuliani has just not been forthcoming. They can't chase after this money in any reasonable way. And that's what prompted these outbursts from Rudy Giuliani. In the courtroom, he had called in 10 minutes late over his cell phone, and you could hear his voice, that unmistakable voice. This is Rudolph Giuliani, and then at times saying, they're making defamatory remarks, and get my lawyers on the phone, or get them on, his, on the phone. His lawyer then stepping out of the courtroom to talk to him, calm him down perhaps. But the bottom line here, Aaron, is that 
there are real consequences coming for Rudy Giuliani because of the work he did for Donald Trump after the 2020 election. It's coming in bankruptcy court on Friday. And the attorney for, for Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss told me just after the hearing that they are ready to take his properties, including this apartment behind me. Mm. Right. Caitlin, thank you very much. Now let's go to Ryan Goodman, our legal analyst. Of course, he's with Just Security. And Ryan, so starting with Giuliani, I mean, just to take a step back here, obviously, the judgments against him dwarf his assets. And yet he has been trying to make money any way he can. We have seen a sordid side. <laughs> he said Trump still owe him $2 million. <laughs> uh, of the former mayor. Let me just show everybody. I'm thrilled to introduce you to something I'm incredibly proud of. My own brand of organic specialty coffee, Rudy Coffee. I can uh, do a happy birthday greeting. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here's my handle. Here's my spout. I've been sleeping on my pillows for some time. I love them. Yeah, simply the very best pillows ever made. I mean, Ryan, you know, it, it, you can sort of laugh at that. There's obviously, it's sad too, but it, in the context of what's going on in this bankruptcy courtroom, what does all this mean for Rudy Giuliani? So it means a lot of trouble for, for Rudy Giuliani. It looks like the end of the road, probably at the bankruptcy <laughs> court. He is, his own lawyers are actually saying they want to take the case out of bankruptcy court, and so does uh, Ms. Moss and Ms. Freeman. So it looks like on Friday that will probably be the judge's ruling, and then I assume immediately uh, Ms. Ra Ms. Uh, Moss and Ms. Freeman will go to courts in New York, Florida, and D.C. to try to get liens immediately on his properties, which are worth apparently about $11 million in the Florida home and the New York home. So, all right, which, I mean, it's amazing. So $11 million, they said the New York apartment is like six, six and a half, so down there is about, what, four and a half? I still rather live in Florida than New York, though. I ain't dealing with that code. I can take a hurricane once every 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 year and probably get hit. But yeah, I'll take that over New York, man. I need to think about where we are on that uh, and, and where Rudy Giuliani used to be. For some reason, it's just hard to get your arms around that no matter how many times we hear about this. Rudy Giuliani may be on the verge of losing both his homes to the two Georgia election workers that he defamed. At the former mayor's bankruptcy hearing in New York today, the judge signaled that he may be ready to throw out the case, meaning that Giuliani could con lose control over all of his assets. And those two election workers that we have all come to know so well, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, would then be allowed to try to seize his properties. We are expecting the judge to decide Giuliani's fate this Friday. The hearing today was incredibly testy. The judge at one point even threatened to mute Giuliani's microphone, saying, and I'm quoting the judge now, I'm going to ask you to listen to me, and if you don't, I'm going to have to cut you off. Joining me here tonight to discuss, CNN legal analyst and the former federal prosecutor, Elliot Williams. Elliot, it's great to have you. Uh, wow, we yes. kind of knew this was going to be huge. Caitlin Pollens has been all over this, but what are the possible outcomes here? I, in all likelihood, it looks like the bankruptcy proceeding gets dismissed because just about everybody wants it. The judge has made clear that he's uh, ready to go that direction. Rudy Giuliani seems open to the possibility, and Shea Freeman and Ruby Moss also seem to want the bankruptcy proceeding to be, to be dismissed. Now, they all have something to gain from that happening, but I think that's where it goes. But so what does that look for Rudy Giuliani if that is what the judge decides on yeah. Friday when it comes to... Does that mean Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, their attorney, they immediately have control over this potentially? What does that look like? Not immediately. So Ruby, Rudy Giuliani would get a chance to appeal. Uh, the so that's where we're at now. So the reason that judgment came down is because, as they're saying, he was going to do his bankruptcy. But they're like, all right, go ahead and do that. But and do your appeal. But we're going to go after the assets. If you ain't got the money, then we're going to go after the assets. Now, you, of course, they won 150 and you want like that 150, so 75, let's just say 75 a piece. You want that 75 a piece. But when you when you just a regular person, if you can come up on what we saying, a five million dollar crib. Even if y'all split both of like sell the apartment and sell the condo, man, five, six million dollars, like that's still good like, after taxes. Eh. You still be all right. You still be a millionaire. 
I mean, I know they dealt with a lot because people were harassing them too, but shit. I mean, that's still a come up. Bankruptcy, which is what he wants, uh, he would get to take it up to an appeals court. They, on the other hand, think they can fight it. They, uh, Ru uh, Ruby and Shay, they would also be able to start going after his assets. Now, again, if he's appealing it and the thing is still in the courts, it would probably take a little more time, but they can start going after that money. Now, are they going to get $143 million? No. Highly unlikely, but they can start going after his real estate. Yeah, because so far they haven't gotten a dime no. from Rudy Giuliani. What do you make of, of his, how he handled the hearing today? You got, when you're in court for any purpose, Caitlin, you got two jobs. Number one, respect the judge and the court. Number two, get your papers and your documents in on time. And he did neither of those things. He was late. He wasn't candid about what his assets are. There are still these open questions about how much money he has, but also seemed to be rude to the judge and cutting him off and cutting other people off. It's just, it's just bad behavior in court. And it's just an unforced <laughs> error. You don't do that. So it's not helpful. It's not helpful. <laughs> Elliot Williams, we'll see uh, what the judge decides on Friday. Well, we know what the judge decide. Come up off the masses. Now, Kendall sent me uh, Giuliani's apartment, and I got a video. I don't know if they actually go into the apartment, so we'll, we'll look at both. Let me see. Yeah, I don't think they showed it. That was gonna be like a video or something. Maybe someone had that shit from like back in the day. I think if you live in New York, man, look at this. It looks nice, but what if I Hell no, they got air conditioning units in this building. They ain't got central. They got air conditioning units sticking out the window. I thought this was a six million. Don't tell me New York is giving it up like that. They got air conditioning units in the windows. Man, it is 2024. I thought they was going to be able to show us the inside of the apartment. Let me see. All right. Rudy Giuliani is ordered to hand over 6.5 New York apartment to Georgia election workers. He defamed. Now, they're saying uh, Rudy Giuliani had four, uh, four MLB championship uh, rings from the New York Yankees, but his son is claiming, oh, my father gave them to me. So he's trying to hide stuff. I think they're going to probably take him to court for those two. Uh, okay. Let me see. This looks like somewhere he would live. It's kind of dated, too. Uh, Giuliani is 80, previously served as a lawyer for president, presidential candidate. Trump instructed to turn over his New York City home, all his valuable possessions to Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, to whom he owns 148 to. Uh, let me see. Yeah, this looks terrible. I mean, I know it's worth some money, man. We selling this. We not living in this. Especially if they in Georgia. If they if they sell this, man, they can live like queens in Georgia. You sell this for like seven, eight million dollars. Shit, you take that down to Georgia, you get a house built for a million dollars, look way better than this, and you still have five million dollars left. Mayor listed the property in July 2023. The property was moved in early October 2024. Yeah, you can't sell this. He was going to try to sell it and put the money in probably like his son or somebody else's name and try to keep that. It was thought that Giuliani had hoped to sell his New York condo, which was listed in uh, the international reality before it could be handed. Yeah, I knew he was trying to sell that shit. This kind of looked like a hotel. There they go, Moss and Freeman. Get that 148. Get that one. Get that one. That's all they had. Ain't sure it's none of the bedrooms. Oh, this must be like a whole floor. Mm. 
yeah, I'm selling this shit. I'm not living up in no damn New York. Too expensive. And the thing is, you got millions, but if you ain't got no money coming in, you can't maintain this $6 million property. We got to sell this. We got to sell this. I'm looking at Moss like, we got to sell it. We got to sell. We need to sell this. We need to sell the uh the 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 the, the Palm Beach condo. We need to sell that. Get this eleven. We split this up five five. Uh, I'm gonna get that AP he had. You can get that 1980s Benz. It's gonna be worth a little bit, but I'm gonna get the Maybach. Maybach, excuse me. Yeah, look, we are gonna split it. I'm gonna take my five six million dollars. I'm gonna be ducked off. I might buy Young Thug's mansion because he ain't getting out. Buy Young Thug's mansion for like a million dollars. And just chill. Just chill. This is all there is, Kendall. I'm not no VIP. Just these two damn pictures. Are y'all y'all keeping this condo? I mean, I guess you couldn't like rent it out to somebody rich, but who's really gonna rent want to rent out Rudy Giuliani's apartment? Unless it's like some fucking Republicans, but they ain't gonna fuck with you because they were the ones sending the damn death threats. I'm selling this shit, man. I don't want nothing to do with it. Let me say something. Kindle. I'm scrolling down. This is it. Load more stories. This is it. This is it. Nothing else. Page down. Page down. Page down. This is it. Nothing else. Just these two photos. One, two, three, four photos. Unless there's a link that I didn't see. View all. Let me see. Oh, here it goes on a whole nother link. Located the Upper East Side. Finally got a piece of the pie close to Central Park. A swanky shopping. Uh, Madison Ave. Landmark buildings. Dated 1906. Gothic inspired brick. Let me see what this living room look like. Okay. Uh, the living room, the library, the dining room. This is actually an ugly ass apartment. Okay, now the kitchen is decent. The eat in kitchen. You got the booth back here. Okay. Got the stainless steel appliances. Why they put the microwave down here? Probably because he's short. They got a picture of George Washington up. Get this shit out of here. All right, let me see. The bedroom. All right, the bedroom is nice. Dated carpet, though. We have to get the carpet redone. It's a small, what was that a queen size bed? They can't even get a king in this mug. I like this reclining chair, though. Okay, here we go. The Palm Beach condo. Yeah, see, this is what I'm. This is more of my speed right here. The Palm Beach condo. All right, three point oh three point three million. Away. in 2019, Giuliani had split the two bedroom condo in Palm Beach was listed for three point three. He purchased it in 2010 for one point four and renovated it. The price was reduced to three million in 2020. So it's probably about five four or five million now but they said like five eventually the market came off because it appears to still Giuliani appears to still be the owner oh yeah and then he lost his license yeah, give me this condo down here let me see is there Oh, you can get a, a condo for three thirty, a one bedroom, one bath. Well, it's only seven hundred twenty square feet. Never mind. Uh, 
Let me see. This kind of looks similar to what Rudy got. 2.4. Let me see what these rooms look like. 1,500 square feet. 16 a month. Bedroom, bedroom, kitchen. Yeah, I, I'll probably just rent these things. I'm not living in either one of them. But I need that money, man. I ain't going to lie to you. I need that money. I don't give a damn where this shit's located. I need that money. I like the kitchen, though. This dining room, terrible. Ain't no support on those backs. Yeah, that bedroom is trash, though, man. This bedroom is like um, when you go to, like, the Hilton or something. This is like what the Hilton would look like. If you go in there, you ain't getting a suite or nothing. It's just a regular room. Yeah, let me get the regular room overnight at the Hilton, please. We got the right thing for you, Mr. Moore. Would you like a queen-size bed? Do you guys offer king? No, we don't. We have a, a queen, or you can get two twin-size. Oh, please upgrade me to the queen, please. Do you guys have a complimentary bottle of water in there? Because I like to drink water when I arrive into my room. No, sir, we actually don't, but there is a bar. Um, nothing is free in there. What do you mean nothing is free in there? Sir, nothing is free. If you drink it, you have to pay for it. If you break it, you buy it. That's why I need to go to the Marriott. The Marriott always gives me a complimentary water. I'm a motherfucking platinum member over at Marriott. I don't even know why I'm here at the Hilton. I turn my nose up to the Hilton. Well, sir, this is all we have in the city. It's either take it or leave it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll just go down to the bodega down the street and cop me some water from in there if that's fine with you. Oh, sir, we don't allow outside water in the building. What do you mean you don't allow outside water in the building? Sir, we have strict policies. If you want water, you need to come down here and buy it from us. I'm not buying no fucking water from you guys. I don't want your water. I want my water from the bodega. Well, sir, you're not going to be able to stay here. Well, you have to call security and escort me the fuck out of here because I ain't leaving without a fight. Put them up. Put them up. Yeah, man. This house is trash. This apartment is trash. I'm selling it. I'm taking my money out of it. And I'm telling Freeman or Moss, if I'm the other one, hey, if, hey, if you want to keep it, then you have to buy me out. So you got to buy me out. You can do what you want. I know they're going to say, Mo, the house is going to be worth seven million, eight million dollars in a year, two years. Guess what? I want my three million right now. I take my three million right now because I got to, we can't afford the taxes on it. If we got this house, what, how much is, how much is property tax in New York? One point four percent of the assessed value of your home. Let me see. Property tax NYC calculator. Property tax calculator. Let's see. Enter the location. What is the address of Rudy Giuliani's apartment? Uh, see, look, in 2021, the FBI searched the home investigation in Giuliani's dealings with the Ukraine, which we know about the phone call. The last sale of this, wait a minute, the last sale in this building was $3.7 million for a very similar Yet more updated and glamorous apartment, says Jenny Lenz of Dolly Lenz Real Estate. Let's see what her portfolio looks like. As such, while the $6.5 million asking price is definitely rich, perhaps they are counting the celebrity attachment. The house, the apartment ain't even worth 6.5. They had it listed at 6.5, but a more updated apartment was only 3.7. Yeah. Give me my money. I'm not sitting around with this bullshit. Ain't no one trying to buy Rudy Giuliani's apartment. They over here lying about the price, even though he still owes $148 million. Oh, man, get the hell out of here. 
Rudy over here trying to finesse the system. Let me see. What's Rudy Rudy Giuliani's apartment address? Does anyone know the zip code for this area? Rudy Giuliani apartment address. I think they had oh there we go there we go right there forty five that be East Street copy all right let's try to find this zip code New York one hundred sixty five. 165 New York home assess let's say it is six million dollars To all of those that said that they're going to keep the apartment, how are you going to pay $115,000 each year in property tax? How are you going to be able to pay the $115,000 in property tax each year just to keep this? See, that's the thing people don't understand. When you win the lottery and your family members are talking about, hey, buy me a house, there's more to just buying a house, even if it's paid off. Depending on your state, you're going to have property taxes. The bigger your house is, the more your electricity is going to be. So the maintaining of the house is the toughest part. You can buy a house cash, but if you got a million dollar house, can you afford the taxes on a million dollar house? So you might go get your family members. Let's say you win a, like $10 million and you buy somebody a $500,000 house. Now they got to pay, let's just say it's like $10,000 a year. Do they have $10,000 a year to pay that property tax? Do they have the money to maintain this house? They're not getting cash. They're getting assets. So they would have to sell this. And if it is valued at $6 million, if they don't sell it in that first year, they didn't receive any cash from Rudy. They got to come up with $65,000 a piece just to pay his taxes. So that's why I'm saying you have to sell this. They don't, they're not getting money. They're getting assets. Now the watches and everything, cool. The cars, sell them. They're depreciating anyway. Whatever cash you can get. But for a $6 million house, it's roughly $115,000 a year. That's why I was saying, what well, people were looking at me like, nah, I'm on your tripping. I'm selling that New York apartment. I can't afford that shit. I'm not taking a little bit of money I'm making because they haven't been working. They've been at the, I was going to say chilling, but they ain't been chilling. They've been getting like death threats and shit. As Torian was saying, Man, they've been getting harassed since 2020. That's four years a nigga on your ass. Exactly. I'm not buying nobody nothing either. But, oh, don't get me started on the lottery. I got a whole breakdown of lottery now. I didn't already, The lottery, y'all say I be pocket watching. Damn it. I, hey, when it comes to the lottery, I'm not giving anybody nothing. Yeah, but but that's what I was factoring it off of because I know that they weren't receiving any money. Now, I'm going to play the video also 
Because, you know, we just here now. We just all over the place. But all of this pertains to what's going on. But that's why I was saying you got to sell this. You can't maintain that that living. Now, let's say, let's say Rudy had $50 million in cash. And he still had to give up his assets to try to get up to that 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 one forty eight that he owes. Let's say you get that twenty five. Okay, maybe two or three years we can maintain. We pay this hundred and fifteen. We split this down the middle, sixty a piece. You know what I mean? We do sixty a piece. We could do this for two or three years. But they're not getting any cash. You got to sell this. You got to sell it. There's no way you can maintain this lifestyle. Even if you had somebody renting it out, let's say oh, shit. for this apartment, you can probably have to charge what? 15,000, 20,000 a month. What is, let me see what 15,000 is. 180 a year, but you ain't even making no profit off of that, man. We probably have to hit their head from fucking 25,000, man. Fuck it. 300,000, we split that, that's 150 a piece, half of that. Oh, see that, it ain't feasible. Because even if we do 25,000 a month, that's 300,000, 150 a piece, we still got to split that 150 and have to pay the taxes. Yeah, dog, like, that's the thing. When you win the lottery, you can't ball the fuck out. The thing is, you have money now. But you don't have money in the long run. You need money to come in to sustain that lifestyle. Unless you're living similar to what you were. But that's why I always said if I win the lottery, anything over $5 million, I'm taking the 29-year payments. What if you don't live to, to get the whole 29 years? What if you die before you cash that motherfucker? You can't live with what ifs. But I know what if I live for another 40 years? I know I got money coming in every year guaranteed. I live right here. If I won $5 million, I'd be living in this same house, same crib. It's just instead of spending $200 on Zara shit each month, I'm spending $500 a month. You feel me? Yeah. Like, hey, I've been broke and I'm never going back there. I'm never, ever going back there. But just off of this, this apartment alone, them getting the assets is actually hurting them. It sounds good to us, but think about it. They're telling you it's $6 million, but a realtor is telling you, no, the last one that sold in that building was $3.7 million. So now you crank that down to $4 million, $2 million a piece, when we thought we was going to get like three and a half a piece. Now we're down to $2 million. Let me see what... Let's just say it was a $4 million valuation. That's $77,000 a, a year that we'd have to pay. Oh, Lord. <sighs> you do some stuff in perspective that I didn't think of before. Well, I mean, I... I mean, I don't know. I mean, I always just... I was always just curious on how stuff works, but I'm taking me. I'm always taking the, I'm taking the long run. Like one thing I regret is not joining the military when I first got out and getting a retirement check. Now at that age, I didn't understand because I had fast cash coming in and I was traveling and stuff. But then I started to realize, you know, when I was, when I was 19 years old, I made more money in one year then my mother did, and she was working at her job for fucking, I was 19. So my mom had been at her job for, what, seven years? But when I was on the road, I was on the road nonstop getting overtime, per dem checks. So at 19 years old, I made like $62,000. At that time, that was what, 2004? 2000? No, 18, 19, 2005. So I think at that time, my mom was probably making like 58 maybe? And I made $62,000 in one year as a 19-year-old. But I wasn't taking out extra money on my taxes. So when I got hit at the end of the year, I owed like fucking $4,000 in taxes. 
at 19 years old. I didn't understand taxes. So I'm like, man, what the fuck? Then I had my car, I had my property tax on that. And I'm like, okay, shit. Then I got the insurance. I'm like, man, what the fuck? This is a lot of money that they whooping my ass for. So I owe like $4,000. So ever since then, on all my checks, ever since then, whenever I work, I take 100 extra out for federal. I take 100 out for state each year. But I was 19 years old. I never made that kind of money in life. I never, I didn't know what to do with that. So that's when I started to realize, okay, boom, boom, boom. And then when I got my first property, I paid $15,000 for my first house. And then when I got hit with the property tax on that in Kansas, I'm like, oh, okay, good. I knew a little bit about this. I put a little bit of money away. And then I told you guys when I was like 20 years old, when I went to, I was in South Dakota, I went to Rapid City and I didn't know about overdraft fees. And I went to Best Buy, I went to buy a video game because at that point, this is 2004, 2005, I didn't know about overdraft fees. When I went to the bank, I'm opening up a bank account. I'm not paying no attention to overdraft. I'm not ever going to overdraft. But that's when I realized, I was like, damn, you got to watch your money because ain't no one else going to watch your fucking money. And this is when I, I'm on the road. And this is a year after I made $62,000. But I'm spending cash because it's on my card. I'm thinking if I get to $0, they're going to cut that motherfucking card off. No. They had to put laws in that overdraft, like it got to stop at the like a hundred dollars or some shit like that. But at that point, I went three hundred dollars over because my limit was like two fifty. But the bank I hit when I bought that game, it took me to like three hundred dollars. So I'm calling the bank. I'm going to the ATM because he couldn't call the bank at that time. It's probably like fucking seven at night. So I go to the ATM. I go in. I'm just trying to look at my balance. It's like negative three hundred. I'm like, what the fuck? I got negative three hundred dollars. But they never cut this shit off. And the payment that came, you know, is the first and the 15th. But, you know, sometimes in between, you might have three weeks before the 15th and the first hit. So I got hit with that overdraft fees. When I went back, I closed my bank account that day. I cussed them niggas out at the front desk. I'm like, how the fuck y'all going to take all this money and not stop my shit? So that's when I went to Bank of America from there. And then I was at Bank of America until I joined the military and I got the USAA. But, yeah, so it's all this kind of shit that, like, it went on in my life to where I was making money. I wasn't broke. When my next check hit, they took that 300 or whatever out, and I ended up going back home. That's when I cussed them out and shit. But it's just moments in my life that, you know, like, I, I had bread. Like, I wasn't embarrassed when I went up to the machine, and it was like I couldn't get nothing because I know I had bread. I still had a per diem. I had three per diem checks on me that I had in cash because I was on the road. I never went home. So when I went home, I opened up my account with Bank of America. My last check hit. Well, my last two checks hit because, you know, your uh, your direct deposit don't hit until the next check. So I had to have my last two checks go there. But I deposited fucking seventy eight hundred dollars from per diem checks into my Bank of America account. When I opened that up, I'm like, I got bread, but I was just on the road. And I didn't know about overdraft fees. So when I see like all this money and stuff. That's why I'm very particular with like numbers and shit, because I've been on the road with like nothing to my name when I knew I had money. So that's why whenever you see me like talk about the numbers and then like I'll go to see how much the taxes are, because I've been hit over the head and I never want to be like that again. So that that that's one reason why my thought process is always like that, because I was fucking I'm on the road. I'm 18, 19 years old, 20 years old. I don't know none of this shit. No one taught me this stuff. I had to learn this shit the hard way. So that's why I'm like, man, when you see me like talking to numbers is because I've been there. I'm like, man, fuck, dude. Like, I ain't got no money on my account. Luckily, my homeboy was there. And, you know, he like he held me over until we got down. Like, I'm eating at the hotel and shit. I mean, I was already like eating at the hotel and stuff. But now I can't like on a Friday because it was like another weekend before we got paid. So I couldn't like go out and eat or nothing. I'm like, man, I got to chill because I. I don't want to owe nobody no money. I paid him back all the money he gave me for like the food and shit while we was out that weekend. But luckily that was a Sunday and we went back to work like on Monday. But that's why I'm always like looking at the numbers because I, man, you don't know how that feels. Like I'm sitting in the room like, nigga, I got like eight days, eight, nine days before I get paid again. I'm like, oh man, hell no. But Uh, what bank was I? So this is a little bitty bank. It's like community bank uh, of uh, no community commerce or some shit like that. 
but they they're no longer a bank. That store, like the bank, is now like a like a a, a flower shop. Now I think. More was the bank's fault that you were spending, reading, and understanding the paperwork always before. Oh man, I opened up that bank account. So when I opened up that bank account, I was 17. I only had that one incident. That was the only time because I was even that bank even paid you like a day earlier. But that was the only instance that I had was that overdraft. And after that, I said, I ain't I ain't fucking with this bank. And I got with Bank of America and Bank of America. That was the first bank that I ever had that you could actually go online. So I remember my Bank of America. I still remember my Bank of America login and everything. So every day after work, from that moment on, when I opened up my Bank of America account, I check my bank account every day. Now, the first thing I do when I wake up, I check my bank account because during the pandemic, some motherfuckers tried to spend like eighty dollars on gas. I had to call the bank. No, 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 no. When I came back from Brazil the first time, there was three different charges. Luckily, USAA they block all like suspicious charges and shit. But every day, check your account. Don't depend on the bank. Check your account. Check your account. I check my uh, my my brokerage account every morning. I check my two my two checkers accounts. I, I, every day, every day, every day, just check that shit. Well, yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and uh, continue on. But, but now you see, you got to factor in this type of stuff. And that was my whole thing. Like when I'm here and they're getting assets, I'm like, you got to sell that shit. There's no way you can maintain a million dollar home when you aren't a million dollar nigga. You see what I'm saying? If something costs a million, you got to be able to continuously make a million. Yeah, I check my account in the morning and just periodically throughout the day, I'll just check my account. All right, so let's play the other video where Rudy is now. Tonight, Rudy Giuliani, Donald Trump's former lawyer, ordered to surrender his New York City apartment in just seven days. And you can see it here thanks to Realtor.com. Wood paneled library, intricate ceilings, wood burning fireplace. These are things that New Yorkers know are really, really hard to get and find. Giuliani also has to turn over all the valuables inside his ritzy apartment, including TVs, furniture, jewelry, and a signed Joe DiMaggio jersey, which is actually hanging above the fireplace, as you can see from Realtor.com. Now, all of this now is about to belong to Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, the election workers that Trump uh, Giuliani falsely accused, I'm sorry, of tampering with ballots, which led to threats like this. We're going to burn your store down. Now, a jury ruled Giuliani owes them around $150 million for spreading lies about them after the 2020 election. He said he didn't have the money, so now it's these assets. So let's go straight to Caitlin Poland. She's live outside the apartment. Giuliani is now being forced to vacate. And Caitlin, you have done extensive reporting on Giuliani's financial problems. So uh, as you're standing outside that apartment building right now, that apartment, I understand, is worth an estimated $6 million. And Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss are going to be handed the keys in just days. So what then happens? Yeah, Aaron, they're going to get control of this, but it's not the real estate that they're after here, even though this would be quite a nice place to live and had been in the past for the former mayor of New York. It is the money that they're after, Aaron. There is $150 million that is owed to these two women by Rudy Giuliani because he defamed them after the 2020 election. And so what is happening here is this apartment on one of the high floors in this building behind me, it's going to be handed over to the control of Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss so they can sell it and take whatever they make from it in the millions, very likely. And then in addition to that, they're also going to be getting control of a whole host of luxury items that Rudy Giuliani owns. Things like a Mercedes once owned by Lauren Bacall, uh, a Joe DiMaggio signed jersey, many, many watches, more than two dozen luxury watches, including one that was a Rolex one that was given to Giuliani by the French president after 9-11 for his... Oh man, we'd have to scrap over that watch. I know that watch worth something. Four Yankee World Series valued at thirty thousand each. 
is 120 six million dollars but remember they saying that the last property sold for 3.7 now they're saying maybe it's worth six million because of the name attached to it maybe if this was when he was in good standing with trump you could probably get six million so i'm gonna say probably four million dollars for the house they need uh the two million dollars in trump legal fees he 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 got that from Trump. I think they finally paid him that. The 1980 Mercedes is supposed to be valuable because of who owned it prior uh, prior to him. Maggio signed jersey, many, many watches, more than two dozen luxury watches, including one that was a Rolex one that was given to Giuliani by the French president after 9-11 for his services here in this city uh, as mayor. All of that is going to be given to them so they can sell it off and collect the money to begin to collect on the debt that Giuliani pays them. It is an order with some finality here in the federal court in New York because Giuliani hasn't done that much in court to fight this legally and has run out of a lot of appeal options to try and hold off them from getting this property. It took them about a year to get to this point. In seven days, he's going to be turning over the property itself as well as all of the luxury items to them but then there's more at stake. The judge is still going to have to decide about a condo in Palm Beach, as well as World Series rings from the Yankees that Giuliani has, four of them. Right. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, it's incredible to think about it again, the, the former mayor of New York. All right, Kaylin Polance, thank you so much. I want to go now to Michael Gottlieb, the attorney for Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. So, Michael, what is your reaction? I mean, so all your clients have won this now in seven days. They're going to have the keys to this apartment. Uh, and, and they've been awarded these other items as well. What do your clients think? I mean, I think we're all thrilled by this ruling. This is uh, a, a necessary step uh, in achieving accountability for Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. Uh, a jury of Rudy Giuliani's peers found him liable for $146 million in damages for defaming uh, our clients and terrorizing them in the aftermath of the 2020 election. And this is what accountability for that looks like. This is a, a, a necessary and, and key step in our client's ability to start to recover uh, some of what has been taken away from them uh, by being appointed receivers of this property. So, so let me just talk about some of these assets. The Mercedes one's owned by Lauren Bacall that Caitlin Polance was just report, reporting on. Signed Joe DiMaggio Yankees jersey. Uh, collection of luxury watches, 26 of them. One given by the pre, uh, president of France after September 11th. So what do Ruby and Shay plan to do with all these assets? Well, I don't think they'll be wearing all the watches at the same time. Uh, sell, uh, this property, this, the property is, uh, they've been appointed as receivers by the court. A receiver is a person that the court appoints to take charge and custody of property in order to sell it and maximize the value of those assets. So sort of like to, an auction to, to see if they can, how much they can get. I mean, it's, it's yes, yeah. they're, 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 they're vested with power to, I ain't gonna lie. The, the Rolex, I'm probably keeping the nine eleven Rolex. Um, the 911 Rolex, probably whatever the Yankee. Well, they don't. They're not gonna get the Yankee rings. They're not gonna get the Yankee. Ring. I'm just. I'm looking at a report now that's saying they're not gonna get the Yankee rings because of the sun. But I'm probably gonna keep the Rolex. One of the cars. One if one of the cars are straight. Uh, I want to see what the cars look like. I'm gonna keep me a car. Keep me the Rolex. Was well, 26 watches. I'm probably gonna keep me like two or three watches. Let's both take three watches a piece. We sell the other 20. Uh, I'm going to get one of the cars. And then we sell the rest. Auction the property to sell it mm -hmm. privately, uh, to use their discretion in order to make to turn this property uh, into money to satisfy the 146 plus million dollars that Rudy Giuliani owes to them. All right, so some of the assets are in dispute. Now, Rudy Giuliani is a lifelong diehard Yankees fan, right? So you've got the Joe DiMaggio uh, shirt, signed jersey. Uh, but the World Series victories, he has four World Series rings and over the years. And, and, and obviously those, are, those could be worth, who knows what they're worth. To so the right person, certainly priceless. So that's an incredible amount of money, potentially. His son, Andrew Giuliani, though, claims that it, there's a photo that he's put out, this photo right here, 
where he is with his father, he says this proof uh, that his father gave the rings to him because he's standing there uh, holding some of the rings. So how, how much are you going to fight this uh, for that specific asset or will you let that go? I mean, what are you going to do here? We're going to fight for every dollar for our clients to satisfy this judgment. And we'll, t we'll have an opportunity to test the claim uh, that those rings were gifted to Mr. Giuliani's son. We'll have an opportunity to take discovery on that. And the court will have an opportunity to uh, make its decision based on what the evidence shows about it. Um, uh, you know, for all of this, what we're trying to do is use the legal process that's available to Ruby and Shea in the Southern District of New York to hold the former chief law enforcement officer for the Southern District of New York accountable for this debt that he owes to them. So earlier this month, you know, you talk about how, how so many families have gone through such sadness as a result of the political environment in this country. And Rudy Giuliani's family is among them. His daughter, Caroline, I was speaking with her. She Caroline. said that she was going to vote for Kamala Harris because she believed that Trump took her father from her. And I, I talked to her actually about uh, Ruby and Shay, and here's an exchange uh, that I had with her about them. Right now, the biggest threat to our country is Trump. So I think it's important to look at the culture that he has created and the, peop the, um, the way in which he has refused to accept that he lost the 2020 election Man, your dad refused to accept that he law uh, that Trump lost the election too. That's why this defamation case is going on. Don't say Trump took your father away from you. Your father participated willingly in this. As a lawyer and a former mayor, he knew all of this shit was wrong, and he continued to lie. So throw your daddy under the bus too. He's just as bad as Trump, and we've seen him in that Borat movie when he was trying to get it in so let's not forget your dad's a fucking creep too and get everybody to yeah. compromise their values do anything just to keep him in power and attack citizens like ruby freeman and shay moss like he's willing to hurt his own people just to have yeah. power and kamala harris would your dad is the one that hurt them your dad is the one that got hit for $148 million for Shea Moss and Rudy Freeman. Trump got his own issues, but your dad is the reason we're here today. We're not doing the live on Donald J. We got days to talk about Donald J. His day in court is coming up in two weeks, November 11th. But right now we talking about Rudy and this $148 million your daddy owes to these innocent women. Our sisters down in Georgia want $148 million. We're not talking about Donald. We don't give a fuck about your vote. We talking about your father and where this $148 million is going to come from. I'm about to be a Rolex wearing, Mercedes Benz driving, limousine riding, New York penthouse living, Palm Beach, Florida, feet in the sand, kicking it condo off of your daddy in his defamation to these two women. We ain't trying to hear about Donald. We ain't trying to hear about your brother. We trying to hear about your father and where the fuck are we going to get $148 million. That's one four eight comma zero 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 comma zero 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 we want to know where are we getting the funds from you have seven days six days because yesterday is when it happened to vacate the premises and to come up with the rest of that money you can take your vote for kamala harris we appreciate it but we want to know where the money is going to come from you got some money on you you want your father back so bad Give your dad some money to pay these two women that your father defamed, that the death threats came because of your father running his trap. We want to know where the money is. We don't want to hear some story. Oh, my father. No, fuck your father. Where's the money? That's all we want to know. Where's the money? Never do that. What do your clients think about, uh, I don't know if they even know that, that Caroline has said this and that she's voting for Harris. We don't um, care. But, 
But, you know, the lawyer. something like that impact fuck? them. I mean, they have gone through, obviously, you know, incredible horror. We played some of the calls and the threats that they have received. Uh, but but yet there's a sadness here, too. Other families and so many have been uh, have been broken apart by this. Yeah, I don't know if they know about that particular quote. I, I, what I'd say is that, you know, Ruby Freeman and Shay Moss are, are heroes. They made a courageous decision to stand up for themselves, uh, to fight really the most powerful men in this country and in the world uh, in order to uh, achieve accountability for the harm that was done to them, but also to send a message to civil servants, to election workers, to uh, citizens who are participating in our democracy without whom our democracy could not function, that uh, the justice system will hold uh, bullies accountable uh, for uh, for pulling people like this uh, into these kinds of conspiracy theories and, and trying to escape scapegoat them for political gain. And today's ruling, I think, is uh, is a is an example of how the justice system, even though it may take some time and even though it may take resolve and, and the courage of people like Ruby Freeman and Shay Moss, yeah. will hold powerful people to account for these kinds of wrongs. President Trump. So that's that. And well, since we're here, I mean, what do we got? Any other topics? Oh, we got like some Diddy shit. But like I said, Diddy shit's going to be Diddy shit. We can do that tomorrow. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just show the footage of what they were actually doing. They were passing like cough drops to each other. And Rudy was like, oh, look, they're, they're counting fake, fake ballots. Also, just a heads up, there's some very scary shit going on in Arizona. I'm sorry I lied to you, Martin. I just want to go to Arizona. There's some shit going on in Arizona that is very, very bad news for one Donald J. Now, that is a state charge, and we know that there's nothing that he can do about state charges, even if he does win the election, because he's still got a RICO down in Georgia. But there's going to be more information released from um, the prosecutor in the D.C. case. But in Arizona, one of the fake electors just did a plea. Was it a fake elector? But it was somebody that had something to do with it. I, I, I heard it this morning, but they just got sentenced and found guilty. Well, they pled guilty for election fraud, which is bad for Donald J. Now, they're saying that the prosecutors in Arizona aren't bringing this up just quite yet. There's there's rumors of it might be getting pushed to the federal case of what was going on here with a connection. Now. I don't care who you vote for. But let me tell you something. If Donald doesn't win, I am expecting to see him in prison and we will see him in prison. He's not, according to my sources. Now, my sources are not accurate. This is all assumption. He ain't going to win. And then he's going to go to jail. Now, he thinks that there's going to be a big riot like it was in 2021. But let me tell you something. The police, they ain't playing around this time. They getting free bodies. So don't act a fool. Nah, my source ain't no Wikipedia. Nah, I got I got real deal sources. Again, I don't care who you vote for. That's your right. You know, I talk my shit. Vote for whoever you feel is right for you. I personally don't care. But after the election is over, oh, I'm expecting some jail time. I want the book thrown. Hey, hey, hey. All right. But yeah, uh, the next thing is the sun. They're saying that the sun, they're going to be able to keep the rings because of the sun. He did say that he got that. And then I'm going to show you guys the footage of why, why Rudy is getting hit over the noggin with this. Trump's team is pointing to newly released surveillance video from State Farm Arima as evidence of election fraud. Our chief investigator, Brendan Keith, joins us. Brendan, another important. Brendan Keith, you need a bigger jacket, brother. Now, I know this is during the pandemic, so I ain't, I'm going I'm to let it slide. As the pandemic, you couldn't get you couldn't go get fitted for a new size. Um, you know, we've been in the house. We've been eating good. But you D.A. Don't let me see you on TV again like this. Unbutton that motherfucker or something. An opportunity here to separate fact from fiction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we first saw the video in yesterday's state Senate hearing, but state investigators confirm they've had this video for weeks and determined that Fulton was legally counting ballots. But there is more to the story. 
Yeah, I saw four suitcases come out from underneath the table. Supporters of the president are calling it suitcase gate. We call it a suitcase. But those are not suitcases. 11 Alive has confirmed they're the standard ballot containers used by Fulton County. The video shows is that they have pulled out uh, plastic bins from underneath the desks. Those are, are bins that they keep under their under their desks near the scanners. They've investigated this repeatedly, that they had a monitor on site the entire time. And frankly, this has been debunked for weeks by our secretary of state's office. Wait, she said, I thought she said uh, Donald took her dad away. Wait, it was Rudy that was saying that they did all of this? Hmm. Hey, Clara or uh, Caroline. Where's the $148 million? This we wanna know. We don't, we don't care about no <laughs> we don't care about no sob story about your daddy. We want to know where does your daddy got the money? My daddy's seen the video. Evidence? Your officials need to watch the video. They did. The video is not new. State investigators reviewed the State Farm surveillance tapes weeks ago. Gabriel Sterling with the Secretary of State's office tweeted the 90-second video of election workers purporting to show fraud was watched in its entirety by Georgia Secretary of State investigators shows normal ballot processing. That the press reported there was like a supposed water break or water main break or pipe break or whatever, and that this was an excuse for people clearing out of State Farm Arena. The water pipe leak and the events on the surveillance video did not happen on the same night. Those two events occurred 17 hours apart. How do we know? We were there. Well, early this morning, we told there is was a water main break above the room. I'm standing in here at State Farm, Farm Arena. That live report was hours before the surveillance video of the room clearing. No, <laughs> they had all of this and they just knew they were just blatantly lying. Like, how do we know? Because we were there. The workers leaving were those who opened the ballot envelopes. And once they were done processing that batch, they went home. At about 10 o'clock, there was one person working the polls who told everyone in the room to leave. They began letting certain people go. No announcement was ever made to, to leave for anyone to leave. Was anyone actually told to leave or just that they were done counting? Republican monitors claim they were forced out. They were made to leave. So it was done in contravention of the statute. Both 11 Alive journalists on site that night independently confirmed to me that they were not told to leave, but they were told counting was done for the night. Fulton County, they were telling us that their absentee ballot vote counting their workers went home from that this evening. They'll be back uh, around 8, 8.30 in the morning. And why are they only counting them whenever the place is cleared out with no witnesses? This part is true. The press and the party monitors were not given notice that counting would continue into the early morning hours, and they should have been. The Secretary of State says one of its monitors was present. The counting of those heavily Democratic absentee ballots did result in a big batch of numbers coming in from Fulton County in the 1 a.m. hour on election night. And Brendan, we just got a big dump of numbers for DeKalb and Fulton. I remember that distinctly. And that spike in numbers has led Trump supporters to conclude that Joe Biden took the lead because of it. That is not true. Biden was already leading Fulton County significantly before those absentee ballots were counted. And he did not take the lead in Georgia until three days later. And then we also know what happened that evening or well, that week. Hey, I just need 11,980 votes. One more than we need to win the election. We got the confirmation of that. But now we're about to listen to Rudy Giuliani just so we can just get the, the backstory on it because it's a joyous day right now. You know, her father, Trump took him away from us. Well, let's just see what exactly Rudy was saying just so we can confirm or deny if he had anything to do with this. Because I, I, I'm not for sure. I can't remember if if he got disbarred for for saying lies or or did or did they say that Trump hired him because he knew that Giuliani would continue to spread this I don't know man I don't know let's see let's, let's take a moment and figure I this mean, out think about it like this interest is basically like free money so when you hear that word interest and what emerged very quickly is because it's not a singular voter fraud in one state. 
this pattern repeats itself in a number of states, almost exactly the same pattern, which um, to any experienced investigator, prosecutor, would suggest that there was a, a plan from a centralized place to execute these various acts of voter fraud, specifically focused on big cities and specifically focused on, as you would imagine, big cities controlled by Democrats and particularly focused on big cities that have a long history of corruption. The number of voter fraud cases in Philadelphia could fill a library. Just a few weeks ago, there was a conviction for voter fraud and one, two weeks before that. And I've often said, I guess sarcastically, but it's true. The only surprise I would have found in this is if Philadelphia hadn't cheated in this election, because for the last 60 years, they've cheated in just about every single election. You could say the same thing about Detroit. Each one of these cities are cities that are controlled by Democrats, which means they can get away with anything they want to do. It means they have a certain degree of control over, certainly control the election. <laughs> This lady back here just trying to keep a smile. She don't know what the fuck going on. Lock her ass up to board completely. And they control law enforcement. And unfortunately, they have some friendly judges that will issue ridiculously irrational opinions just to come out in their favor. The direct evidence of the fraud of the people who will testify that, in fact, that's what happened to them, as well as. The 50 to 60 witnesses we have for the way they were treated and not allowed to inspect the ballots. They weren't just um, not allowed to do it. They were pushed. A few cases, they were assaulted. In all cases, they were put in a corral so far away. Probably the closest they got is from here to the back of that room. We could do like a, uh, did you all watch My Cousin Vinny? You know the movie? It's one of my favorite uh, war movies. Cause he this nigga sweating too hard, man. When you lying, you know. You know you lying. You sweating like this. Like, goddamn, Rudy. Talk about, man, we wasn't that close, but the, the, the back of the room to where we are now. Shut up. He comes from Brooklyn. And uh, when the, the nice lady who said she saw, and then he, uh, he, he says to her, how many fingers do I? How many fingers do I got up? And she says, uh, three. Well, she was too far away to see it was only two. These people were further away than my cousin Vinny was from the witness. See, that's how you know these two are in cahoots. They always talking about some shit. My good friend, the Dr. Hannibal Lecter. I'm like, what the fuck is a Dr. Hannibal Lecter? A Dr. Hannibal Lecter, shut up. All right, real quick, uh, before we go into like any free topics, here's what I'm talking about in Arizona, which is bad news, bad, bad news. 